So what are free choice centers? Free choice centers are basically the setup of your environment where you've created little areas that have individual focus. So in one area you may have the place that has a dramatic play with dress up, another area is a cozy corner with books, maybe a listening station. You've got a writing area where children can practice uh, writing skills and the things that they need to do to strengthen their fingers for that. You can have a puzzle uh, center you, or tabletops. You can have a science center where children can explore. These are simple. These are a child's eye level. Uh, the light center is always a good one. Alphabet center where they study letters of the alphabet. Uh, you've got um, the magnet wall. They can explore with magnets and different manipulatives there. And then the block center, and that's a, that's a popular one. Children work together using block type materials and also the art center and there's many more so to start off the block center is probably the most common uh, center you're going to need the biggest space for that uh, because it's going to be more children gathering at one time the if you're going to have one thing in your block center really invest in it's just a nice set of wooden blocks those things will go forever kids love them but anything block related um, this list here is a good one. You've also got your other hard hitter, which is dramatic play. Children just automatically just hone into that one. They want to go right in, uh, start with the kitchen. It just draws them in. Uh, there's many activities and you can switch it out. Always keep it interesting um, and fun in that area with themes and different ideas that will just give them always something new and interesting to do while they're working on their skills. You can sneak math, you can sneak literacy, pretty much anything you want right into dramatic play. It's really quite amazing. Then we've got the literacy center and that's just basically going to be some books out for the children. Keep your books nice. Um, board books are a good idea to keep out. Just They don't need many. And then bookshelves where the books are facing out. And then they're right at children's level so they can just grab and go. The math center is going to be the type of manipulatives that link together. Um, counting activities, number activities, correspondence activities, games, things like that. But things that you you know the children can utilize themselves, work independently, and then just always keeping them fun and interesting so that, you know, they want to come in and, and work with those materials. So then there's the writing center. In the writing center, you'll want to keep out things like uh, pencils, markers, highlighters for the older kids. For the younger kids, it can be really just as simple as a wooden tool that they can draw a letter and sand with or even trace a sandpaper letter um, just using their fingers getting familiar with the letters and then getting familiar with writing skills and strengthening those fingers and starting to to be able to hold a pencil the light table is kind of a newer center on the scene and it's a really great tool kids are just so drawn to it it creates another sensorial aspect to learning they can, you can use the transparent materials. There's so many now available. You can even find things at the dollar store um, and switch out. There's so many ideas out there for the light table. So then there's the science center. So the science center, it can be as simple as a little tiny table set up with a tray that just has stuff out on for exploration that might cover nature um, and seashells, rocks, you can leave some magnifying glasses out, but the trick is to just constantly be changing this out with the children's interests. Um, keeping the materials safe and uh, age appropriate, you wouldn't want to keep small things out with little ones around. Then the Play-Doh Center. Um, this Play-Doh actually 
it's such a comfort item. It's always a great tool to have just out when kids first arrive in the day. They can go right to it and it's, you know, so uh, soothing and a sensorial aspect. But with Play-Doh, you can do so many things. You can switch it out with the letters you're using. There's Play-Doh mats you can switch out. There's tons of recipes. You can always be uh, making this interesting for them. There's You can make things. They can press things into it. The Play-Doh ideas are just non-stop. And then with the sensory table, not everybody's fortunate enough to have a big, beautiful sensory table, but sensory, it doesn't have to be that complex. It could be really just one small bin that you bring out um, or a big bin where everybody can share. Maybe it's during outside time or special times of the day, but sensory is a great opportunity for scooping and filling and using different fillers in there, like rice, um, is, and you can dye it in different colors. And But I think the idea here is just keeping it always changing, up to date, always interesting for the kids with all of the centers. And have there's just limitless ideas that you can do with these. You don't have to leave a lot of things out at once and it's really just best not to. But it's just at least one activity per center where kids get their choice.